Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at some more interesting and challenging problems. We're trying to find the limit as a sequence converges if it does converge. So here we have a situation where we have the square root of 2, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, and these are really tongue twisters, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. Of course, they're all embedded in one another and so forth. I think you're getting the idea. Now, what does that converge to if it converges at all? Well, we could take a calculator and start calculating each of these individual elements of the sequence, and you can see that it does appear to be converging to 2, but it would take a while before you get some certainty to that. Or maybe we can find an exact value using some clever technique. So here we remember that the square root of the product of terms like a times b times c can be written as the individual square roots multiplied together. Which means if you have something that looks like this, you can then separate the products and you can then say that this is equal to the square root of a times the square root of the square root of b times the square root of the square root of the square root of c. And then if we use fractional exponents, you can say that this is equal to a to the one-half power times b to the one-quarter power times c to the one-eighth power and so forth. All right, if that's the case, and if a and b and c are all the same number, in this case the number 2, we can then say that the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 can be written as the square root of 2 times the square root of the square root of 2 times the square root of the square root of the square root of 2, which is equal to 2 to the 1 half power times 2 to the 1 quarter power times 2 to the 1 eighth power. And since in this case all the bases are the same, you can write this as 2 to the 1 half plus 1 quarter plus 1 eighth power. Now if we take a look at the original sequence that we're dealing with, we can then say that the nth element or the last element can then be written as follows. The sequence, if you go on and find the last element, you can then say that that last element, let's go over here, can be written as 2 to the 1 half power plus 1 quarter power plus 1 eighth power plus 1 16th power plus 1 over 32 power plus so forth out to infinity. If that's the case, all we have to do is simply add all these terms together and if you recognize it, this particular addition simply adds up to 1. So we can say that this is equal to 2 to the first power, which of course is equal to 2. And that then, then, mm, cool. and that, <laughs> and that gives us the validation that what we're trying to do here with the calculator does indeed look like this will converge to 2, although it might have taken a long time using a calculator to get any sort of certainty of that. Here you can quickly see using some clever technique that this does indeed converge to the number 2 when we get to the infinite element, and that's how it's done.